on World News Tonight. Bucha massacre. The Russian forces are now accused of having even more bloodshed on their hands as new reports reveal brutal images of mass murder carried out in Ukraine towards the Russian troops. Political panic. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan barely manages to avoid being ousted through a no-confidence motion, stirring up the turmoil between the people and the government. Lethal floods. Torrential rains in Rio has caused devastating waves of floods submerging large areas of state, leaving masses of victims homeless and struggling to stay afloat. United for Ukraine. Famous stars of the music industry band together to put a vibrant show in support of humanity. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Russian invasion of Ukraine is still leading as the top story around the world. Ukraine accused Russian forces of carrying out a massacre in the town of Bucha, while Western nations reacted to images of dead bodies there with calls for new sanctions against Moscow. Ukraine's defense minister on Sunday accused Russian forces of an array of atrocities. Alexei Reznikov said the crimes came to light after Ukrainian forces moved into cities and towns after the invaders withdrew. This is not a special operation. These are not police actions. These are ordinary racists, fascists and inhumane who simply committed crimes against civilians. Raped, killed, shot them in the back of the head. The whole world needs to know about this. These images, taken witnesses in Bucha, show what appear to be victims in a mass grave and bodies lying in the streets. Bucha lies 23 miles northwest of the capital, Kiev, an area Ukrainian troops said they recaptured on Saturday. Bucha's mayor, Anatoly Fedoruk, said on Sunday that 300 residents had been killed during a month-long occupation by the Russian army. Russia's defense ministry denied the Ukrainian allegations, saying footage and photographs showing dead bodies in Bucha were, quote, yet another provocation by Kiev. It said Russian military units had left Bucha on March 30th and that civilians had been free to move around the town or evacuate while it was under Russian control. But the reports and images of dead civilians brought outraged pro-Ukrainian demonstrators to the streets of Berlin on Sunday. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken described images of dead bodies there as, quote, a punch in the gut. And the foreign ministers of Germany, France and Britain, along with the European Union's foreign policy chief, expressed outrage over the reports from Bucha. Reznikov vowed to document the alleged atrocities and said Ukraine would weigh bringing charges in the International Criminal Court. There is a whole list. These are war crimes. These are crimes against humanity. The images of corpses in civilian clothes left behind by departing Russian troops has prompted calls from officials in Ukraine and Europe for tougher sanctions on Moscow. Russia's war against Ukraine is showing no sign of slowing down with its military attacking key oil facilities in the country. The news comes after hundreds of dead civilians were found near the Ukrainian capital in an area where Russian forces appear to have withdrawn from. Russia says it has struck what it calls critical infrastructure near Ukraine's southern port city of Odessa. The attacks on Sunday caused an oil facility in the region, the main base for Ukraine's navy, to go up in flames. This is not a good morning for Odessa. We woke up to powerful explosions near our home. The impact was huge. There is still smoke billowing. The children were in a panic. The windows were blown in. It was terrifying. Saying oil facilities have been a focus of their attacks, Moscow's defense ministry explained that it had struck four oil facilities across the country. While no casualties were reported, a local prosecutor said the bodies of 410 civilians had been recovered near the country's capital after the withdrawal of Russian forces. It added forensic experts are on the ground to examine the bodies and gather information. Against such a backdrop, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is accusing Russia of genocide. In related news, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stressed that those responsible for war crimes must be held accountable, referring to Russia's war against Ukraine. He also noted the Biden administration believes Russian forces have committed war crimes and is helping with evidence collection. The head of the U.N. also expressed shock over the situation, calling for an independent investigation.
Pakistan's political turmoil deepened when Prime Minister Imran Khan avoided an attempt to oust him and sought fresh elections after dissolving parliament, a move that the opposition called treasonous and vowed to fight. Pakistan plunged into political crisis on Sunday after Prime Minister Imran Khan dissolved parliament, thwarting an impending no-confidence vote that he was widely expected to lose. The opposition blames Khan for failing to crack down on corruption and revive the economy, which has been struggling with high inflation and widening deficits. A successful no-confidence vote would have opened the door to power for the opposition. Khan is now instead seeking fresh elections and has said without evidence that the move to oust him was orchestrated by the United States. The U.S. has denied any involvement. But Khan also said his claims of foreign interference were accepted by the country's national security body. It was confirmed that this plan to oust me was from abroad, which was interference in Pakistan's internal politics. And the basis of this no-confidence vote was from abroad. When the country's highest national security body confirms this, then the proceedings were irrelevant. The numbers were irrelevant. The opposition has called Khan's blocking of the vote unconstitutional and has vowed to fight it. The Supreme Court said it would take up the matter on Monday, though Khan's fate is not immediately clear. Khan lost his majority in parliament after allies quit his coalition government and some others defected within his party. Pakistan is a nuclear-armed nation of more than 220 million people. No prime minister has finished a full five-year term since its independence from Britain in 1947. French President Emmanuel Macron warned of the risk of a Brexit-style election upset in his only campaign rally before the first round of the presidential election in a bid to convince dispirited voters and re-energize a lackluster campaign. To more on this, we have Abidal Nobolni, special correspondent Chetana Dharmaratha, who joins us now from Normandy in France. Chetana. Yes, Shanali. A week or so before the April 10 vote, Macron finds himself on the defensive with far-right leaders Marine Le Pen staging a comeback in the polls and the race tightening between the two front-runners of the crucial April 24 runoff. Although he is still projected to win a second mandate, Macron has lost ground in the polls, a dip that assumes aides attribute a manifest that includes tough conservative measures such as raising the state pension age to 65. Others have also criticized a campaign that started late and lacked magic. After a rock star-like entry on the stage of a 35,000 seat stadium outside Paris, Macron started his two-hour speech with a long list of accomplishments and promises to create jobs in hospitals and nursing homes in a clear attempt to convince center-left voters uh, poll stars say could abstain. However, he stayed true to his reformist program, saying the French will have to work longer to pay for these measures because he refused to raise taxes and increase public debt file that has ballooned to 102% of GDP during the pandemic. The rally of about 30,000 supporters were attempted by former left-wing and right-wing prime ministers and other party grandes. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidhar Nobel News Special Correspondent Chetan Adharmarath and reporting from Normandy in France. Torrential rains have triggered flash floods and landslides across Brazil's Rio de Janeiro state, killing at least eight people, including six children and leaving 13 missing. Two days of heavy rain have battered a broad swath of the southeastern state's Atlantic coast, the latest in the series of deadly storms in Brazil that experts have said are being aggravated by climate change. The latest floods and landslides come six weeks after flash floods and landslides killed 233 people in the scenic city of Petropolis, the Brazilian Empire's 19th century summer capital, also in Rio State. This time, the area's hit hardest, including the tourist town of Paraty, a seaside colonial city known for its picturesque cobblestone streets and colorful houses. The storms turn streets into rivers in several cities, sweeping up cars and triggering landslides, a frequent tragedy in the rainy season, especially in poorer hillside communities. In all, seven houses were swept away in landslides in the city and another four people injured. 71 families were forced from their homes. 
The federal government said it had sent military aircraft to help the local rescue effort and dispatched National Disaster Response Secretary Alexander Wilkes to the state. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. A mass shooting in Sacramento, California has left six people dead and multiple others injured. Investigators are working to identify those responsible for the tragedy. A horrific scene after a night out in downtown Sacramento. A barrage of gunfire ripping through the crowded sidewalks, drawing nearby officers to the scene. Progress. Officers nearby, hearing the gunshots, rush to help the victims. Around 2 a.m. this morning, officers heard gunshots near 10th Street and K Street and saw people running. They were on scene almost immediately. We were running. This lady went down. I guess she got hit in the leg, like right across from us. Bystanders running for their lives. All we heard was just gunshots, at least automatic gun. Um, after that, we heard gunshots fired back. The shooting taking place shortly after 2 a.m. when bars in downtown Sacramento were closing after a busy Saturday night. The victims' families waking up to the tragic news and now searching for answers. Sacramento's mayor offering support to the families. This is a senseless and unacceptable tragedy, and I emphasize the word unacceptable. Sacramento police now asking witnesses to submit videos while acknowledging some of those shared on social media appear to show a fight that preceded the gunfire. It is unclear if the fight was related to the shooting. Washington has imposed new sanctions on North Korea. This time those were five North Korean entities all thought to have supported the development of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles or the ICBMS and weapons of mass destruction. The United States on Friday introduced a new set of sanctions against North Korea, evaluating Pyongyang to have a clear determination to continue developing weapons of mass destruction. The U.S. Treasury Department imposed sanctions on five North Korean entities thought to have supported the development of the country's intercontinental ballistic missiles. The entities include the Ministry of Rocket Industry, which is a mass destruction research and development organization, and four of its subsidiaries, which are known to be trading corporations. North Korea launched what was analyzed to be a full ICBM test last Thursday, ending its self-imposed moratorium on long-range missile testing since November 2017. Washington also identified two ballistic missile tests done on February 27th and March 5th local time. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said North Korea's provocative missile tests posed a clear threat to regional and global security. She added that because they were a blatant violation of UN Security Council resolutions, the United States and its allies are set to continue sanctioning to limit Pyongyang's continued development and proliferation of weapons. Washington also made it clear that any organization or country that engages in transactions with the recently sanctioned entities in North Korea will be penalized. Friday sanctions mark the fourth round imposed by the Biden administration. Until now, North Korea has not responded with any military aggression against these sanctions. But intelligence authorities in the U.S. and South Korea believe North Korea could reopen its nuclear facilities or conduct more nuclear tests in response. Chief nuclear negotiators from the U.S. and South Korea are set to meet in Washington on Monday to discuss issues on the peninsula. The union that Amazon workers recently voted to represent has demanded the company to start bargaining in early May and seize any changes to employment terms at their warehouse in the interim. The first union of Amazon warehouse workers in history isn't wasting time. Just a day after forming, it sent a letter to the e-commerce giant demanding it begin contract negotiations next month. In the meantime, it said Amazon must, quote, cease and desist any changes to work policies at their New York City warehouse. 
That's according to a press release posted on Twitter late Saturday night saying, quote, workers denounce any attempt by Amazon to delay our hard-won right to bargain collectively. The union also asserted that Amazon must respect each worker's legal right to union representation during disciplinary meetings. Amazon did not immediately comment. We want to thank Jeff Bezos for going to space because when he was up there, we were signing people yeah, up. we were signing that campaign. <laughs> Led by union organizer Christian Smalls, some 55 percent of workers voted on Friday to make their Staten Island Fulfillment Center, known as JFK 8, Amazon's first unionized work site in the United States. Afterward, the second largest U.S. private employer said it may file objections before the vote is certified based on what it called inappropriate and undue influence by the National Labor Relations Board. The vote represented a victory for U.S. organized labor and a milestone for labor advocates who for years have considered Amazon's labor practices a threat to workers. Will Smith is facing the fallout as the star is now tending his resignation from Hollywood's Film Academy. The actor is taking responsibility for what many call reckless actions and is working towards rebuilding his tarnished reputation. Will Smith has resigned from Hollywood's Film Academy after hitting presenter Chris Rock on stage at the Oscars earlier this week. In a statement on Friday, Smith wrote that he was heartbroken, calling his behavior on Oscars night shocking, painful and inexcusable. He added that he would accept any further consequences imposed by the Academy, writing, quote, I betrayed the trust of the Academy. I deprived other nominees and winners of their opportunity to celebrate and be celebrated for their extraordinary work. At the Oscar ceremony Sunday night, Rock made a hair loss joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, referencing the movie G.I. Jane. Smith then strode up to the stage and smacked Rock across the face, returning to the stage just an hour later to accept the Best Actor award for his role in King Richard. It remains unclear whether Rock was aware of Jada Pinkett Smith's alopecia diagnosis, a condition that causes hair loss. Film Academy president David Rubin said on Friday that the group accepted Smith's resignation, but would continue with disciplinary proceedings that could lead to additional penalties. The Academy's formal investigation is set to start on April 18th. Welcome back to World News tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The Taliban has banned narcotics cultivation in Afghanistan. Their previous ban in 2000 also to seek international legitimacy faced a popular backlash. Hong Kong's embattled leader Carrie Lam has governed the global financial hub through the unprecedented upheaval of the anti-government protests and COVID, said that she will not seek a second five term of the office. At least 90 migrants were rescued off Spain's Canary Islands. The Spanish Coast Guard plane spotted the migrants on an inflatable boat 75 miles southeast of Gran Canaria as they struggled to sail in the rough sea. After prayers, people gathered for Seri, a ceremonial feast before commencing of the fast outside mosques in decorated festivals markets. Large crowds adorned the markets ahead of the beginning of the Ramadan fasting. The Ecuadorian government said at least 12 prisoners died and another 10 were injured during a gang confrontation at a prison in a new episode of prison violence in an Andean country. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you've missed to watch any of the stories we air tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with visuals of chart toppers like Ed Sheeran and Camila Cabello, among other music stars, taking to the stage at a televised concert aiming to raise funds for Ukraine. Thank you for watching us. Have a good night.